Hey everybody, my name's Catherine and I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. If that sounds like something you're into, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Today I'm going to be doing a really fun video and showing you how I did this glue resist with indigo. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps out this video and my channel. So as always, let's go over the supplies for this project. First, you're going to need a 100% cotton t-shirt that's pre-washed. You're also going to need blue Elmer's glue, which is the washable kind. You're going to need a disappearing marker, which is also used for quilting, and a ruler for drawing out your design. I also used a plastic bag and a plastic drop cloth to keep everything tidy. Just like all my tutorials, all of these supplies are linked in the description box below. The next thing you're going to need is an indigo kit or any kind of indigo that you like, gloves to keep your hands clean, a stir stick for stirring up the indigo, a drying rack, and cinder paw for washing your indigo. So I have my freshly washed t-shirt on the drop cloth and I'm going to cut a plastic bag and fold it to be the width of the body of the t-shirt. I want to put it in between the front and the back of the t-shirt just to prevent the glue from soaking through the front of the t-shirt onto the back of the t-shirt. I'm only going to do the design on the front of this t-shirt. So I'm just going to get it all spread out inside and make sure that all the seams are lined up. Now I'm going to take my washable Elmer's glue and my ruler and I'm going to start to draw out my design. This is a washable marker that is also good for quilting. I use it a lot for drawing out designs on t-shirts when I'm going to dye them. So this is a small t-shirt. Depending on the size of the shirt, um, you can kind of measure to decide how big you want to make your pattern. I'm just going to start by drawing a line down the center front and then drawing a line uh, perpendicular to it. And I'm going to just make sure that all the lines are the same length. I'm working quickly because this marker does disappear quickly. So I'm just going to do another set of lines. And this is good for me. I'm just going to kind of wing it with the Elmer's glue now. But if you wanted to draw out uh, the whole design, you can do that with the marker. I actually have quite a few glue resist tutorials on my channel. So if you're looking for more inspiration, I will put the playlist link down in the description below. And I'll link it at the end of this video too. So I'm just going to start by putting glue down on the lines that I've established. And then I'm going to come in and freehand just kind of make up a pattern. This pattern is going to look like kind of like a snowflake. And the inspiration is drawn from uh, Ukrainian Easter eggs. I like to make Ukrainian Easter eggs and they're done with wax and multiple dye baths. I have actually a few videos on my channel about them and I'll link those in the description box down below too. But they have really pretty geometric patterns in general. If you look up uh, Pasanki or Ukrainian eggs, you'll see all kinds of really beautiful patterns. So this isn't an exact pattern, but it's sort of a geometric snowflake pattern that I'm making up as I go. I think there's something just so therapeutic about drawing with the glue on fabric and doing these sort of geometric patterns. I'm just freehanding this pattern. I think it's really relaxing to kind of just methodically go section by section drawing the same thing. But if you're not into freehand, you can also do a geometric pattern with a ruler and the marker, or um, you can put something behind it and maybe trace it. There's many ways to do it. 
I like to look on Pinterest for different pattern inspirations and look in books for different patterns like traditional patterns or floral patterns. I did a geometric plaid on a t-shirt with tie-dye um, with the glue and that turned out really nice. And then I also did a floral pattern with the glue that was also freehand but based on um, inspiration that I found online. Let me know down in the comments what kind of patterns you would like to see or what kind of motifs you like to draw with glue resist. I'd love to know and I'm always curious to know what you guys are inspired by. The key for working with this kind of glue is just going slow and being really deliberate with every line that I put down. I like to make sure I'm applying just the right amount of pressure with the glue so that it doesn't get gloppy or um, drip. So here it is after it's been completely finished and it's still wet. I'm going to let it dry completely for about 24 hours. So here it is completely dried. You can see it's nice and hard. And I'm going to get my indigo vat ready to go. It's been mixed up already. I'm just putting on my mask and my gloves before I open it up and dye my shirt. This is a thiox vat. And if you're interested in learning more about indigo dyeing and shibori tie-dye, I would encourage you to go to my website, onyxartstudios.com, and check out my online dyeing classes. I teach online dyeing classes that are live and also classes that you can take at any time on indigo tie-dye. You can sign up for my mailing list so you never miss a new date or when they go on sale. So I'd encourage you to go and sign up for my mailing list. So I'm going to take it out of the dye and I'm just sort of checking it to see how the coverage looks. It looks good and I'm going to let it oxidize on the drying rack. So after it's been oxidizing for a while, I'm going to take it off and dip it one more time. You can see it's pretty dark, but with indigo, I like to dip multiple times. So I'm just going to get the bubbles off the top one more time and put it back into the vat and keep it going, keep it agitated just for good measure. So it looks good and I'm going to take it out of the vat and just wring it out and leave it on my drying rack again to oxidize completely. I can see that the indigo is on top of the glue. It's kind of hard to know if the resist worked, but um, I'm going to soak it for a little while before I put it in the washer dryer. After I soak it for a little bit, I'll put it right into the washer dryer and wash it on hot and dry it on hot. And you can see here, this is the finished product. It's totally washed and I got a really nice dark indigo blue and the resist is nice and white. It looks really nice. I love the snowflake pattern. I'm really happy with it. If you, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on my social medias at Onyx Art Studios and check out my website for my online dyeing classes. I have the link in the description below. If you like this video, be sure to check out these other videos. I think you might like them as well. And go to see my channel. I have tons of dyeing tutorials and videos all about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!